Today, I'm going to be reading Chapter 24 of Ground Zero by Alan Gratz. This chapter is titled, Moving Forward. Ha ha, the guard cried, leaping through the flowers. Rashmina threw her hands out over her head and cowered, but nothing happened. When she peeked out, she saw the guard through the flowers a few meters away. He wasn't looking in her direction at all. That snake had been lying about seeing her, trying to get her to reveal herself. Rashmina stayed low and quiet, watching the guard. He was an Afghan and young. Older than her, but not by much. A teenager. He was gangly and thin, and with a wisp of a beard on his chin. A boy man, Rashmina thought, like the ANA soldiers she'd seen in, her, in the village. This couldn't have been the, his field then. He was guarding it for someone else. For the Taliban, it could be. This was the kind of job they might have pursued in doing soon. Is somebody here? The boy called again. This time, Rashmina heard the fear in his voice. He was just as scared as she was. Rashmina almost felt sorry for him. He was no villain, just a boy who needed a job. But he still had a gun, and his job was to shoot her if he caught her. If I could only go back in time, Rashmina thought. Just go back in time, in time, ten minutes, make a di different decision that would erase this moment. But was ten minutes enough? How far did she have to go back to avoid the situation she found herself in? Back to the de decision to wrestle her brother for the rifle, to follow him from their home, all the way back to the decision to bring the American soldier into her house. What if every path she chose was the wrong one? The guard was getting closer. Right or wrong, Rishmina had to make a decision, and fast. Rishmina picked up a rock from the ground, and when the boy's head was turned, she took a deep breath and threw it across the canyon. It clattered against the steep rock wall on the other side, and the boy spun and fired his rifle. Katung, katung, katung. The echo in the little valley was explosive. Overwhelming, Rishmina put her hands over her ears and ran in a crotch in the opposite direction. Poppies parted and flattened as she ran. Would the guard turn and see her? Shoot her? Rish Suddenly, Rashmina was at the side of a field in the narrow space next to the canyon wall, where no poppies grew. She threw herself to the ground and curled into a ball. She tried to listen, but her heart thundered in the her chest, and her ears rang from the gunshots. The boy didn't come, and she couldn't hear what he was doing. He couldn't wait for her. She couldn't wait for him to find her. Rashmina looked around and saw she was sitting on the thin, sloping path that ran along the edge of the poppy field. If she followed that path one way, she'd come out where she started. If she went to the other way, she would come out where the boy had been leaning against the rock. Rashmina stood in the crouch again and moved towards where the boy had first been standing guard. She got to the rock, but the boy hadn't returned. Rashmina chanced a peek over the top of the poppies and saw him on the other side of the canyon, where she'd thrown the rock. He held his rifle at ready with tight white knuckles. He looked back and forth nervously, sweat bleeding, beating from on his forehead. The boy frowned, and he couldn't find anything, then looked back across the poppy field to where Rashmina had run, ran, had run. I must have seen the path she'd cut through. I must have seen... Oh. He must have seen the path he'd cut through the poppies because he moved quickly in that direction to investigate. Rashmina didn't wait to see what happened next. She slipped around the rock and followed the path out of the little canyon. When she was finally out of sight, she ran harder and faster and then she ever run faster than she'd ever run before. Up a ridge she went, slipping and sliding on the loose rocks, then down into another dip in the peaks. Stumbling and cutting herself on the rocks and scrub brush, she couldn't slow down, not until she had to put as much distance as she could between herself and the boy with the gun. At last, Rashmini came to a gap in the peaks, and she had to stop. She was out of breath, and her arms and legs were shaking too much. Rashmini collapsed against the rock and cried. She cried for herself out of fear and exhaustion. She cried for the, her family, who had no idea of the terror that was heading their way. She cried for Bassoon, who was lost and gone to her forever. And the worst of it, the absolute worst, was that every single thing that wore her down, every single cut and bruise that stung her skin, every loss and betrayal that made her sob, 
all of it was for her fault. It was all because Rashmina had tried to give refuge to a man who had asked for help. Rashmina wiped her eyes with her headscarf and looked out at the view, to the north and to the east and the east. Beyond the white-capped mountains was Pakistan. To the west lay the family river valley of her home, the houses of her village climbing up into the hills like giant stairs. Rashmina sagged. She had traveled so far in a day, and yet had gone almost nowhere at all. And now she wasn't sure she could go on, that she should go on. Why keep trying when every decision she made was the wrong one? A small pebble skidded, skittered down a steep hill a few meters away, as though something had knocked it loose. Rashmina's eyes flashed to it. She caught the slightest of, the, of movements, as though the rocks themselves were alive but nothing was there. Then she saw it. Rashmina gasped quietly. Camouflaged against the rocks was a snow leopard, and it was looking right at her. The big cat was gr- was light gray and brown with black spots. Rashmina could never have, seen, never have seen it if the rocks under its feet hadn't shifted as it snuck by. It wasn't hunting her. She was sure. Snow leopards might take a sheep or a goat from the village every now and then, but they never attacked people. Rashmina's heart raced all the same. It was incredibly rare to see a snow leopard. It felt almost magical to come face to face with one here, now, in this rote, inaccessible place. The snow leopard held its long tail rigid and stared back at her. Its pale eyes flashed in the shadowy light. Rashmina's skin tingled, and the energy coursed through her. It was almost as though she could feel the leopard's strength in herself, as though they were two creatures who lived outside the bounds of society, the bounds of society, beyond the reach of the rest of the world. She breathed in and out, matching the slow, powerful rise and the fall of the snow, of, of the snow leopard's chest. Poom. The tiny echo of an, explo- an explosion somewhere far away made them both flinch. Rashmina indistinctively looked over her shoulder towards the sound. Then she looked back, and the snow leopard was already darting off around the other side of the mountain. Safe tra- travels, leopard, Rashmina whispered. Peace be upon you. The snow leopard was gone, but the humming, ripping, rippling strength of it remained. Rashmina's long be- black hair, free of her headscarf, flew around her. She felt a power, a purpose that she had never felt before. That, mo- that morning, before the Americans, before the battle, before Taz, before everything, Rashmina and Pasoon had laughed and played like they, were, they did when they were children. Rashmina had wanted to capture that moment in Amber, to preserve it like a fossil. She hadn't, wa- she hadn't wanted a thing in her life to ever change again, but in- insects trapped in Amber, fossils preserved in stone, those things were dead, forever stuck in the past. And the Kochi... Rashmina had longed for their fairy tale life, riding camels through the mountain passes and trading food and stories around the campfire of a hundred different villages and towns. But idyllic, as but as idyllic as that sounded, Rashmina didn't want to be Kochi either. They had been living the same lives, uninterrupted and unchanged for thousands of years. Every generation the same as the last. There's no way up, and no way out. Moving forward is scary. It was scary. Sometimes you made mistakes. Some sometimes you took the wrong path, and sometimes even when you took the right path, things could go wrong. But Rashmina realized that she wanted, she wanted, needed to keep moving forward, no matter what. It was her fault that her family was in danger. It was her fault that Basoon had chosen today to leave and join the Taliban. If she hadn't chosen revenge over refuge with Taz. She and Pasoon would still be home right now, living their normal lives. But sometimes, what was right and what was easy were two different things. With renewed strength in her heart, Rashmina drew her headscarf around her head and started down the mountain towards her village. That's all for today. Thank you for listening.